so uh, the news that uh, the sections will last uh, one hour and a half, it's, it's very good news because I have the opportunity to answer questions and to insist on, uh, on, on, on difficult, on, on details, uh, w which are subtle, which are interesting, and to, to react to your, I mean, feedback. So, for instance, what, uh, what happened yesterday with the question about the Kuranishi model, how can one do this? Pass from an infinite dimensional object defined using an infinite dimensional group acting on an infinite dimensional space to such a simple structure. Real analytic equations, finitely many, in fact. So a system of real analytic equations. You take the, the solutions, a set of solutions, and divide by the action of a compact Lie group. So uh, I will come back. So uh, now to give uh, more accurately, precisely what I explained in five minutes yesterday. So I just, with accurate notations, I will explain this. But before doing this, I was also asked about references. This is not an easy task to give you references for the um, uh, introduction in Donaldson theory I gave yesterday. And the reason is the following. The standard reference is, of course, um, the, the book uh, of uh, geometry. by Donaldson, Donaldson and Kronheimer. Where Donaldson theory is introduced in a pedagogical way, it's written for, 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 for students, for PhD students essentially, so uh, it's m more accessible than a research article. However, however, the book essentially deals with a simply connected situation. This is what, in fact, complicates, in fact, my task and the task of the people working on Keller, Keller and geometry. Because uh, all our all our interesting uh, non-Kellerian for many folks, as, as I, I saw yesterday, have B1 non-zero, or at least one. Uh, so uh, the book is not directly uh, usable. Yeah, so one, one has to be very careful. Of course, many notions are explained in full generality. But uh, difficulties are hidden. Difficulties are specific to the non-simply connected case. And some of these difficulties I will explain uh, today. So in, the, in this lecture. So we will see what happens. What are these difficulties? Some of them. Uh, now, uh, this is also a book which was written for the non kellerian situation, the kobashi hitchin Correspondence by myself and Martin Lipke. Ko -koba -ko Kobayashi Hitchin Hitchin Correspondence by, by Martin Lipke and myself. which uh, deals with a non-Kellerian situation, so no restriction on the fundamental group, of course, but is mainly dedicated to the complex dramatic situation. So here there are many uh, gauge theoretical considerations which are missing because we dedicate this book, in, in fact, to the complex geometric part of the, of the Donaldson theory. Uh, now, uh, with modesty, I'm afraid that the uh, places where you, you find the necessary gauge theory, the necessary gauge theory explained in detail, pointing out the differences, the, the, the technical difficulties specific to the, to, to the non-simply connected case, are my articles, so which are uh, indicated on, on the abstract of the conference. Uh, so I, I wrote uh, about uh, this conjecture about existence of curves on, on class seven surfaces. Uh, a, a paper, um, uh, I think, what is, what is called? instantons. So for the, 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 I think the most appropriate situation is the last one, which is called 
instant tons. And holomorphic curves on class 7 surfaces, which appeared in, in, in Annos, uh, I think November 2010 which has a long chapter on gauge theory dealing with the non-simply non connected case. Uh, there is also a previous article which also contains a lot of gauge theory, uh, um, which uh, it has a complicated title, coming with Donaldson theory on uh, non-Kellerian and so on. So, which is, I think, in maybe I think invention is probably 2000, 2005, I think. So, where the case B B two is one is is treated. So, there also we have any. I have there in introduction only. I uh, I point out the necessarily uh, gauge theoretical knowledge in in the in the marginal case. So, these these are the, the references. So unfortunately, as I said, the book of Donaldson, although very good, complete, pedagogical, has this problem. It's dedicated mainly to the simply connected case, so many of the difficulties which we need are not there. Now, uh, I come back to, let's say, uh, recall. So I was asked at the end of the lecture, about the source, how, how one can construct these local models. And let me start with, in order to understand the idea of the proof, let me start with a very example. We take the solid torus. This, take the, let's say, the role of our configuration space. This was a space of connections, doesn't matter. And I take as group S1 times S1 acting in, in the obvious way by complex multiplication, let's say, in the obvious way. And suppose that you want to understand the quotient, so describe locally um, the quotient around an orbit with non-trivial stabilizer around, let's say, zero, I take this pair, zero, zero x, where x is in S1. Maybe one, doesn't matter. Uh, let me denote this pair by A. You see, I just want to imitate the, the notations we had yesterday. This is a configuration. Yesterday was a connection, now it's a pair in this space. And the stabilizer, GA, is just, you see, uh, S1 lives here, this factor lives invariant, times 1. Yeah. So this is our, see? This is our point, A. And G acts by uh, double rotation. So factor rotates in this sense. The first factor rotates in this sense. Leaving invariant, for instance, this, this. And the other S1 acts like this, right? rotations like this. What is the natural idea? Natural idea is to replace the whole torus by a slice to the action passing through A. So we just, let's say, SA, you take by uh, definition, is uh, you take D1 times X like this. This is slice. Slice through A. So it cuts, cuts the orbit passing through A transversally. Yeah, this is by definition a slice. 
yeah, transversal in the in, in the strict sense. So this means that there you have at that point you you have a uh, direct sum decomposition of the tangent space of the total space, and the idea is to replace so the the the, the space with symmetry as you had so T G you have here morphism of two spaces with symmetry, and the point is that this morphism induce isomorphism of quotients around your orbit. So induces slice here. Induces isomorphism, local isomorphism. This is only what you need, local isomorphism. Around the orbit of A. So instead of looking here, you want local models. So the, the, describe locally, I said. This is the point. Describe here. Describe. This is the point. You want only a local description, not more. Not, 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 this is not a, a description of the global quotient. Uh, so because you chose your objects carefully, so because you use the slice, one can easily see that locally you, have, uh, you can identify the quotients around the two points. So it's sufficient to look here. And here you see that uh, SA, GA, is just a disk factorized by S1. So it's just, uh, let's say, 0, 1, like this. So this is your local model. So this means that uh, what you obtained locally is uh, this segment. Yeah. So this is, is, this is what you do if you want to solve this elementary problem. Now, let's come back now to our, uh, to our solution. So come back to Donaldson theory. So in this case, the situation is more complicated because you don't have only a factorization. You also have an equation. Yeah? So you have both. So he, you use the same idea, but you have to keep track on, of the equation. So uh, what we have, we have a configuration space and an equation, let's say psi, psi, which takes values in, we saw yesterday, uh, a, to, a to plus of SUE, uh, given just by psi of A is the curvature of A trace free and plus. This is our equation. This is the equation which defines projective anti self duality. So the, the con you are interested in the connections which are projectively anti self dual. So this is our equation. And now we take here an, an A, which is already a solution. C. And the problem is describe not all the quotient, but we want to describe the moduli space uh, around the orbit. OK, in our case, the action was from the right. This was our problem. Yeah? And uh, this quotient is what is just the vanishing locus of the equation factorized by the gauge group. This was the definition. You see, equation factorization. Equation factorization. Yeah. Pardon? Pardon? Ah, uh, oui. Yes. yes. A is D of A. Now, what we need is the analogon of the slice. What is a slice? The slice used in gauge theory is called the Coulomb slice. It's given by L2, L2 orthogonality. It's very easy what happens. So fortunately, we have affine spaces. All these are affine spaces. And these affine spaces, uh, as I pointed out, is an affine space. with uh, A1 SU of E as modal vector space, as modal. Let's pass director as, as modal vector space. 
and uh, which can be endowed, of course, with, for instance, with a L2, because everything is compact, the base is compact, with a L2 uh, square product. We also fixed a Gmanian metric on your manifold. So everything, uh, also the bundle, E was Hermitian, so this, this bundle, associated bundle, will have uh, uh, an induced Euclidean structure. So we have a Euclidean, vector, real vector bundle here. Uh, okay, tensorized with a bundle of one forms. This is already also Euclidean. So you can take uh, fiber-wise inner products and you integrate and you get an L2 uh, inner product on, on, on this fresh air vector space. Of course, we'll not, we'll just be pre-Hilbertian, pre not Hilbertian, because the L2 inner product will, will uh, give a non-complete uh, norm on this, uh, on this fresh air space. So what is the slice? So what is, what, uh, my point is that because of defined structure, it's very easy to define slices. We just have here to look at the tangent space to the orbit, and the result is the following. Very important, I take, this is my orbit, possibly not like this. This is just dA of A0 SUE. You see, this elliptic complex comes again and again with geometric interpretations. So don't forget this elliptic complex associated to A, to A, which is the following. This is the CA, we denoted. A1 SUE here. And A2 plus SUE, like this. Here we have D A plus, and here D A. And here zero, and here zero. Now, you see now, for the first time, we see a geometric interpretation of the image of the first operator of our elliptic complex. This is the tangent space to the orbit. But this allows us to write very easily a slice. And the result is the following. So what should I do? The result is the following. That the Coulomb slice Long slice through through A is let's say S A is you take uh, A plus alpha and of course the orthogonality condition you, you write the orthogonality condition for the image will be the kernel of the joint d star alpha is 0. We ha you have, of course, the joint, the formula joint. But the formula joint is also uh, a, an honest uh, uh, a joint with respect to the L2 inner product. Yeah. So this is our slice. Of course, we need just local versions of this, because everything is local. Let's say e a. Let's E plus alpha in, uh, in SA with alpha. Here, it's convenient to take uh, higher Sobolev norms in order to make the proof work. So you see, for the joint, for the joiners, you use all, always L2 inner product when you define a joint. But if you want to define small, it's convenient to to use uh, an L2 cast of norm with respect to a very uh, large K, which can be specified. Usually it's taken in gauge theory bigger than three, at least three. Okay, so first step, first step, replace. Like we, the, the same we did with the torus, with respect. A, A, A. Acted on 
by the infinite dimensional, you see, this, this is infinite dimensional, by something which unfortunately is, is still infinite dimensional, excepting the group. We want something. So by S A epsilon G A. And one can prove that uh, the quotients are locally equivalent using the same idea, but more complicated proof. Uh, so, or, of course, we have to give track. So, so as I said, we have to keep track of the equations by S A epsilon G A and the equation C, of course, restricted to the slice. This is the first step. And this is precisely what I explained with the torus. This is the simplest thing we, we, we can do. And we want something already. The group is finite dimensional. But uh, the equation here, I mean, this manifold, one cannot prove that it's still infinite dimensional, this slice. is again, one can uh, understand this bigger slice, this global slice. This is an affine subspace with a smaller uh, model vector space. The kernel of this adjoint operator. Now, the second step, the second step is to weaken the equation first. And this weakening the equation will lead us already in the finite dimensional uh, uh, framework, universe. So, uh, weaken the equation. Of course, you keep in mind that, and afterwards you have to impose a strong equation back. Weaken the equation C, let's say, of S A epsilon A guy zero. We replace it by D A. We compose it with a function, with an operator. But as I said yesterday, yesterday was, uh, I was at, at the end of a lecture, so I, I said you have, the idea is to define it as, a, as an operator, as, as a map with values in an appropriate space such that the result will be a submersion. So this will be defined on S epsilon, but you take, you consider it as values in the image of D star. Uh, D star of what? Of A top, A to, uh, 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 D A star of, uh, D S, exactly. So uh, composing like this, you land in A1. So what you use in this complex, you go up. So your equation take values in the last, in A top plus, with the third term of the complex, and you compose, you go up with the joint of, uh, of the, of the, of the uh, second operator, the last operator. You come back, <coughs> replace by. The point is that regarded like this, the composition will be a sub a submersive at A, at, or if you want, F at alpha is 0. This is submer sub submersion at, uh, at A, or if you want, at alpha is 0. This is the same. Uh, so this means that you replace now this SA, which is infinite dimensional, by the solution of this weaker equation, and you don't lose every, uh, anything. On the, on the contrary, you, you have a bigger space. So you, so, uh, so you get new version of the local model. will be, instead of uh, SA, you write sigma A epsilon. This is the vanishing locus of this weakened equation. So this was D A C. So now you see, I try to write formally anything. Uh, the group G A. And, of course, we have to impose, in order to have equivalent problems, the, 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 the strong equation. 
Uh, so the weakening was used only just to reduce SA to something finite dimensional. So here I have to write the original equation. The point is that this is not only submersion, but the kernel of the differential, so the, the kernel of, of, the, of its differential is, surprise, precisely H1A, which is finite dimensional, by, of course, by the classical theory of elliptic complexes on, on manifolds, on compact manifolds. All the harmonic spaces, Hodge theory for elliptic complexes. This is what you use essentially. The kernel of his differential, what is very important because it's the tangent space of our of, of the of the of sigma a, of the manifold, the submanifold defined by this immersion. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that this time we have an almost finite dimensional model. So this is finite dimensional, finite dimensional uh, sub-manifold of FSA. See? And not that's finite dimensional, but we know what is its tangent space. It's the harmonic space H1. Now, almost, you see, in every step, we made finite dimensional one of our three objects. Now only the third remained with still with values in, in that uh, third uh, space of the complex, which is still infinite dimensional. And now comes the last step, third, third step. Prove, this is not difficult. Prove that on sigma, not on S, on sigma epsilon of, of, of this finite dimensional submanifold, the equations the original one, the one we need, C, and it's the projection on the space H2, A. Which apparently is weaker. Apparently is weaker. Sigma i epsilon are equivalent. This is this is not difficult. This is not difficult. But okay, you have to write the proof. The uh, the the idea is to prove with implicit function theorem that the projection on the orthogonal complement, the orthogonal complement is the image of the of the last operator. The projection of the orthogonal complement at the orthogonal complement can be expressed can be expressed as a function vanishing at the origin in, uh, in terms of this projection. Yeah, this, this is the point. So this means that you can forget about this and you look only at the, at the projection. So you get uh, the following version. of our local models. Which is just sigma a, epsilon, g a, and the projection. You see, the proof is ex ex incredibly explicit. Now, we are almost ready. What, ha what is left to be done, but it's not necessarily. Very often I skip this, but now I have to do this because the statement made yesterday, use here H1, an open set in H1. But this is now, let's say, uh, a game for, for stu uh, very easy to do, to understand, even for, for students in uh, any sort of differential geometry. Why? Because now we have a submanifold, this sigma a, and here h1 is the tangent space. We know this. H1a. So the only thing one has to do now is to identify, to define an isomorphism between this submanifold and its tangent space of a in the neighborhood of a. This obviously can be done. This obviously can be done. 
There is no need to prove this. Yeah, one can use, for instance, you project, you just take here in the defined space, you take an orthogonal complement, you make projection. The only point that has to be checked is that any, I mean, if you take the reasonable identification I mentioned with the projection, this will be equivariant. This is the only thing we have to do. So now for step, replace sigma a epsilon act as a space with symmetry by an open neighborhood of, of, of zero in H1 A, which is precisely the tangent space of this submanifold, but neighborhood, replace. Uh, so endowed with the same, with, with the GA action. So as I said, the point is here, the only point is that the identification given by projection here is equivariant. And then this proves the theorem in detail. Of course, you have to complete here every, uh, uh, any step, but uh, there is only one technical difficulty here. Uh, the rest is, is a complete proof. So it's very interesting because uh, in many proofs with transcendental methods, I don't speak about deformation theory in, uh, in, algebraic, in, in, in pure algebraic geometry. But usually, the proofs uh, about local models, deformation theory, Kuranishi type local models, use the same strategy yeah, to, to, to define local models. OK, so uh, this was, uh, as I said, but I think it's very good because I will need this idea with the slice in other situations. So the fact that I had this opportunity to answer in detail a question stated yesterday was not planned, but was very good. Now, the, the next step is to understand uh, reductions. So next goal, understand the reductions. By reductions, I mean this is, let's say, folklore. This is uh, what every, any subject of mathematics has own folklore. So reductions for gauge theorists mean uh, reducible for us ASD, reducible, uh, a projectively ASD, reducible solutions. This is a very good uh, choice, I think. You see, because the Lanson theory is very abstract, very abstract, and one can go ahead and define tens and of moduli spaces and submoduli spaces, avoiding explicit descriptions of moduli spaces. I, will, I take this opportunity to do precisely the opposite, so to gi give you examples of, uh, of moduli spaces which, which can be described in detail. Just I want to see if I, yes, I, if I respect my, uh, my plan is the case. Now, you see, I described, I gave you yesterday several equivalent definitions of what a reduction means. And the easiest, maybe, was the following. Consider, so let... E, L tensor M, uh, on orthogonal splitting of, of E. Of course, this means that, in, in fact, M is determined by L. So 
in order to have such a splitting, you only have to give a subline bundle, a subline bundle. Then M will be its complement. Now, now, suppose for simplicity, it's not just for simplicity. We, only, we will only need this situation. Suppose for simplicity. that the two summons are not isomorphic uh, as admission line bundles. Not isomorphic. Very often, and we'll see examples, the examples in fact we need, this will be always the case. So this means E has only such, for topological reasons, in many situations one can prove that uh, for any topological decomposition of E, the two summons are not isomorphic. And if you take into account the classification of line bundles, E dest, this means that the chain classes are different. I think I have a problem now. I realize that my notation for the base manifold was M. So, please, I try as possible to avoid, although no confusion was possible, practically, but here is, so it's L orthogonal. L orthogonal. First, that they are not isomorphic. So our next goal today was describe the reductions corresponding to L. Why? Because the isomorphism classes of line bundles, of Hermitian line bundles, on any paracompact space are in uh, Bijective correspondence with H2? No, of course not. No, here nothing is on. M is only a Riemannian manifold. I, I, up till now, I didn't even mention the complex surface, it's only in the introduction. Up till now, nothing is complex for the moment. Everything is, say, infinity. Everything. Yeah? So L is Hermitian, rank 2 bundle. And L is a differentiable subbundle. In gauge theory, uh, in fact, use complex geometry at the end if you want to compute the moduli spaces. So, as I said, from the moment yesterday I made an introduction, and then I wrote Donaldson theory, and I let I wrote let M G be a Riemannian four manifold. Everything was differentiable, and now still we are in the differentiable world. And in the referentiable world, the line bundles, Hermitian or not, the complex line bundles and the Hermitian line bundles, both are classified in the same way. Yeah? So the GL, GL1, GL1 bundles, principal bundles, and S1 bundles are classified by, in the same way, namely by the Chern class. So this is why uh, this is an equivalence. It S, the two Chern classes are different. Go, describe uh, RL by definition is, let's say, the subspace of, of course, reducible uh, ASD, projectively ASD, the connection, uh, reducible, let's say, uh, elements A in A ASD of A, so pro projectively ASD connections, which are gauge equivalent. to uh, a split connection compatible with this splitting. You see, we, you saw, yes, we saw yesterday that if a connection is reducible, this by definition, by one of the equivalent definitions, this means that it has a parallel splitting or equivalently can be written as direct sum of connections in line bundles yeah? in our orthogonal decomposition which are gauge equivalent 
two connections. of the form B, direct sum, and the other one must necessarily be A tensor B dual. Where, uh, yeah, why? Because, uh, so if you want as operator, d, db, zero, zero, here you have dA. Don't forget, we classify this index A means here that uh, uh, the induced connection in the determinant must be the fixed one, A. So in particular, we'll have here L. We must have an identification between the tensor product of these two line bundles and our determinant line bundle D. And on this determinant line bundle, we have the distinguished, the fixed parameter, which was our billion connection A. So the tensor product of the two connections you have in L and L orthogonal must be A. So this means that the other one, the connection on L orthogonal, must be A tensor B adjoint. Yeah, here, so elementary operations with connections are used. So we want to classify this. The subspace of, reducible, of reduction which correspond to this splitting of A. You understand? So, for every topological decomposition of A, you can, of, of E, you can ask this question. So, we fix such a topological decomposition and we ask what are the corresponding reductions? Yeah, so, this is a very important problem. And uh, now, you see, the connection F uh, A of, let's say, so the, the curvature of such a product of a direct sum connection, we can do it this together. B here, I write A tensor B dual is, can be written like this, F B. Uh, here we got F A minus Fb, exactly, zero, zero, and we need, we need a trace-free part. Zero, and you get here Fb minus, and here you get, uh, I think, the opposite, minus, F B minus times zero, which means that uh, conclusion, you you are direct sum, you are split connection contribute to the moduli space, so gives you a projectively ASD connection, so belongs to A. ASDA, if and only if you have a very simple condition, FB plus minus FA plus is zero, where A is the fixed parameter. So it's not variable, only B varies. This is a very interesting condition, and we want to, uh, I want here to, to, to explain it in detail what happens. Why? we can solve completely this problem. You see, in old Gaussian, in Donaldson theory, there was a philosophy, and this was the following. All the moduli spaces of instantons associated to non-abelian gauge groups, the non-abelian structure groups, like for instance SU2 or, or U2, are very hard to understand, and they give important information about your manifold important smooth information, differentiable, for instance, invariants of the same VD structure. On the other hand, all the abelian moduli spaces, and we'll see immediately here that we have an abelian moduli problem, uh, are topologically determined, determined by the homotopy type of the manifold, and can be described in detail explicitly. This is what we are going to, to, to do now. 
So this is the conclusion. And moreover, more uh, so global. can be identified with the moduli space, an abelian moduli problem, moduli space, uh, let's say M A of L of connections. B in A of L, L is a Hermitian line bundle, and the Hermitian structure is taken into account, of course, satisfying this equation, which we can, uh, let's say, denote by star in XA, satisfying the equation in XA. Okay? So we reduced the classification of the reductions associated with a fixed topological splitting of A to an abelian moduli problem. Modulo, which is a gauge group which acts, the automorphism group of L as a Hermitian line bundle. So modulo, I, let me write to this like this. Modulo, the automorphism group of L, that means the gauge group of a Hermitian line bundle is very easy to describe. Why? Because what means in a point, in a fiber, you have a Hermitian line. What is a, unit, a unitary automorphism of a Hermitian line? It's just the multiplication by a complex number in S1, independently of the bundle. So this means that in a billion framework, the gauge group is, in for bundles of rank 1, the gauge group is always the same, independently of the bundle, and it's C infinitely M and S1. This is the gauge group, GL. It's independent of L. This is the same group as in zeiber witten theory, an abelian gauge group. So you see, we, we came to a abelian moduli problem. Now, the first question is, uh, is <coughs> OK, you can ask why this, uh, why, where is, why this miracle? Yeah? Where is uh, the complicated gauge group disappeared? Yeah? The problem is that the explanation why we could reduce the G factorization by a GL factorization is that we fixed not only a conjugacy class of splittings, but we fixed effectively a splitting. So L is not only as an isomorphic class of line bundles, but it's really fixed as subbundle. You see? So this uh, automatically reduces the gauge group, the symmetry, the possible symmetry, to, uh, to the automorphism group of L. This is the explanation. But the statement can be formally proved. So you just write a map between two quotients, and you prove that it's bijective. So uh, the first question, and this is very interesting to, to study. Is this equation compatible? First question, are there any solutions? Maybe I should point out from the beginning that the main technical problem in Donaldson theory is precisely the appearance of the reductions. So this means that uh, the, here the, the, the goal, the aim in Donaldson theory was always to get rid of the reductions. For instance, if you read the book of Raman and Rovka I mentioned, you'll see how effort, how much effort is invested to prove that for generic metrics, you can get rid of, of the reductions. There are no reductions at all. Yeah? So, and uh, these are bad. The reductions destroy, the, let's say, make very difficult to use uh, the Donaldson theory. Yeah? So rise technical definition uh, difficulties, for instance, in the definition of the invariance. So you can have this idea in mind that we study a bad locus and if possible, we'd like to get rid of this bad locus. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> for class 7 surfaces, 
as I will explain you, we can't get rid of these bad locus. So we do have to understand it in detail because we, can, we, will, we will not disappear. This is the point. So, uh, is this, so is this, e this equation, if f b plus. So now let me do this, write it like this, 2fb minus fa plus is 0. And here, please note that this is just the curvature of, of the connection b squared uh, tensor a dual. And what we have here is a connection, a Hermitian connection in L squared tensor d dual. I wrote the equation in this way. So now look at this of, of this state of this of, of, of this formula. This tells you that the curvature of a connection in a line bundle is anti-self-dual, is anti-self-dual. Yeah, so the plus component is zero. And now comes let, a very important but simple idea which solves the problem, I mean, which allows you to give the answer. The point, the point is that the curvature of a, uh, of, a, of a connection in a line bundle is always closed. In our case, all the curvatures of connections in line bundles are just purely imaginary forms. So all the curvatures here, f, a, f, b. So any curvature in a Hermitian line bundle is an element in this space, purely imaginary form on the manifold. What we know, what does chen weil theory say? chen weil theory says that this curvature first is closed, number one, and that i over 2 pi of this is pre is rep represents the churn class in the RAM cohomology. This is the simplest, simplest case of chen weil the theory. Yes? chen weil theory applied to U1, to line bundles, tells you that first the curvature is closed, uh, is because we work with Hermitian connections, will be a purely imaginary two form. And uh, we know that if you divide by, if you, if you take i over 2 pi of this curvature, you'll get a representative of the Chen class. Now, we know that this is closed. If this is anti self dual, will be also co closed. Because in the formula of D star, in classical Durham cohomology of Hodge theory, you know that D star, a joint, is star D star, where Hodge operator. So this means that if, if you have a closed form, which is self-dual or anti-self-dual, will be also co-closed, so it will be harmonic. And this solves the problem. Because this can only happen, this can only happen so we can have, we have solutions if there is, there, there is, so there, there exist, there exist solutions, there exist solutions, then, and now let me write it like this. The harmonic, the, and in brackets, unique harmonic, representative, let's say H, uh, H, uh, H of C1 of uh, this line bundle, L dual tensor D squared must be, must be anti cell dual. You see? So what happens here? You have the harmonic space H2, the RAM, H2, which is isomorphic, is isomorphic to the, the RAM, cohomology uh, space. And this harmonic space splits as a direct sum, but 
Now let me point it this G uh, G dependence H dot plus G direct sum H two minus G. So uh, this uh, the equation can be compatible only if you are so unlucky. So so unlucky that our harmonic, unique harmonic representative, G harmonic representative of this churn class lands here, which is somehow, if you say, as soon as this is non-zero, will be with probability zero. And in not only that it's probability zero, but we'll see immediately that if as soon as this is non-zero, then this can be avoided by perturbing the metric. Unfortunately, for class seven surfaces, the first summon is zero. <laughs> so this can never be avoided. So this is why equations of this type are always there, are, have always solutions. Yeah. But let's write uh, now the conclusion. If there exists, so conclusion. If, let's say, C1 of this is not GASD edest. So, I mean, this is folklore, but folklore which makes you understand the things. Uh, what, what, now, in, in brackets, formally, this means that this harmonic representative, so the harmonic representative H is not ASD, so GASD, uh, then RL is empty, is empty. You don't have such splittings. What happens, so this is first. Now, what happens if C1 of L squared D dual is GASD? In this situation, the system is compatible, and the moduli space RR, the subspace, is a torus of dimension B1. So if, uh, now let me write a, now like a theorem, if then RL is isomorphic, as we have already mentioned, but I think was deleted here. It was the moduli space uh, M I L of A. So it's the moduli space of solutions of the equation star A. And this is a torus of dimension B1 of M. B1 of M. So I can already warn you that for our class 7 surface, it will be circle. It will be circle. We have circles of reductions. Yeah, so we see this in the proof that the existence of curves, the appearance of circles of reductions. Why is this so? Because you see the problem is, so first of all, you see the why. Let me sketch the proof. Proof of two sketch. Now I can give you a reference. So uh, proof of two. See, I have on my website uh, a, a book, uh, um, a lecture which is called Introduction à la de Georges en français, in French, which will be appear probably, I don't know, in, in the fall, will appear in uh, Cours Spécialisé. And uh, in this lecture, I, I solve, which has let's say more elementary, much more elementary than what I explain you today and in this series of lectures. But I chose in this lecture let's, interesting problems of gauge theory which can be explained in detail to students. Master, master two, master two students and PhD. In particular, you'll see there the description of Young-Mills connections in a line bundle. This is easy. 
but it's so instructive. The point, the point is that uh, if uh, the condition 2 is satisfied, so if you are, if this a chain class is is uh, is JSD. Now the point is that you see, as soon as this equation so is uh, holds, the point is that we know what the bracket is. The bracket must be up to the factor two pi, precisely this representative h. So in case two equation star a is equivalent to apparently stronger one but is not stronger because we proved it that is the consequence of c right is uh, is equivalent to uh, f uh, to, uh, to f f b minus f a without any plus uh, precisely is not h, is minus 2p to be, to be h, because h represents the chain class yeah, of, uh, of this uh, tensor product. So this means that the equation which is there is equivalent because of the same argument. You see, so if this equation holds, uh, then I proved, in fact, that what is here is the harmonic up to the factor to pi must coincide with a unique harmonic representative of this chain class. So this means that the bracket, in fact, is determined is minus 2pH. So now we have a very interesting moduli problem, apparently very easy, 1 of FA minus 2pHI. So which is mod equation for B in AL, had emission connections on L, modulo this abelian gauge group, GL, which is just C infinity of M and S1. So you see, the problem is now classify the connections with given curvature. Of course, uh, the point is that with our choices, uh, the equation is compatible. So this means that the form we have here is in the good Deram cohomology class. So this means that here belongs to minus 2 pi C1 Deram of L. Yeah, because H represents the I mean, the appropriate uh, cohomology class of this tensor product bundle, you see immediately that this is compatible. It's a compatible uh, equation. And now I don't have time. If you want, I can do this, of course. Even now, if you want, I can do the proof. But the point is, uh, let's say, uh, proposition. And uh, I can make the reference to introduction à la théorie de Georges. Un peu de publicité pour mon cours. Now it's available on the on the on my on my page, on my web page. You can see this. Um, this moduli space. So in this case, M L M A of L is a torus. One can say a bit more. Is Natch is canonically a torsor, a torsor over the group, the following group. Uh, you take E H one of M and G. Or maybe a little bit like this. E H one, E H one of M and R over. 2 pi h1 m and z. A torso. This means what means a torso? Comes with a canonical transitive reaction. 
This means that you can be identified with this torus, but not canonically, and the identification becomes canonical as soon as you fix the point. This means a torus. So it's in particular, it's a torus. Uh, so if you want, is I can do that. I can. Uh, I want just write, give you the idea. First of all, you can prove that it's non-empty because this compatibility condition is satisfied. It's true. So you do have solutions B. Yeah, this is, can be easily uh, proved. And then is fix B a solution B B zero in this A A L this time solution. And uh, and look at the Coulomb slice. That's why as I said it was useful that I was asked the, demonst the details about Kuranishi models because the idea is can be applied in many different situations. And you, you, then you can prove that the space of solutions, this is the space of solutions. So you have the space of solutions of our abelian equation star a. This is the, the moduli space we have to consider and factorize by the abelian gauge group. So the space. So here you have GL. This, as I said, is a complicated notation for a very simple thing. And here you take the space of solution of solutions intersected with the Coulomb slices through B naught. And this space of solutions, so B naught plus E H one. E H one, which depends on the metric, of course. Uh, this so, and factorized by a gauge group by five-dimensional gauge group G, uh, where G is defined like this. I take uh, G of M in S one in G L with the property that D star of uh, G minus one D G is zero. You see, this is the subgroup of the gauge group which leaves the slice invariant, which that's, that's the Coulomb slice. So B naught plus care of D star from E A one M to E A naught M. This is the Coulomb slice through Coulomb slice. through through B0. So you take the Coulomb slice. So like we saw, this is precisely the analogon of the, the old, our old SA. The only difference here is that DA doesn't depend on A now. This is the only difference because you are in a billion framework. And all the, con all the Hermitian connections in line bundles uh, induce on the endomorphism bundle the trivial connection always, which so the standard Durham operator will appear. You see, so uh, the Coulomb slice is this one. We now you we want to keep the curv the curvature fixed, so you have to intersect this with Z one, yeah, because you have to you only allow to add one forms which don't change the curvature. Yeah, but in, if you if you you know if you make a perturbation of the curvature plus beta, this is F B plus D beta. You see? So if you want to keep for a billion connections, if you want to keep the curvature fixed, then the only perturbation which are allowed for your abelian connections are with closed forms. So uh, this means that uh, what you do, you intersect the space of solutions with the slice, and you obtain this. And then you see what, what, what remains from your uh, old gauge group. Yeah, what, is, what, what is the subgroup, the maximal 
subgroup of the gauge group which leaves invariant that slice. And you see that it's precisely this one. But this uh, small gauge group, it is called, fits obviously in the exact sequence like this. Uh, here. Uh, like this. And this is, uh, uh, you see, this is what you obtain this morphism. Uh, G is a map with values in S1. You just take the pullback of the canonical generator of H1 of S1. So, so the, this is the morphism given this type. Whereas this subgroup is the S1, the subgroup of constants, which operate trivially on connections. So this has no contribution. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is that our moduli space is this, fin this uh, finite dimensional fine space factorized by this. So you get precisely the torsor I promised. Yeah, because you can prove that the action is by translations. This is the proof. Very good. So, now, uh, what about existence? Now, I said that we supposed we supposed that L is not isomorphic to L orthogonal, uh, which means equivalently, this means that uh, our tensor product we studied is non-trivial. It's the same. It's the same thing. You see? It's the same thing. Now, we supposed. Suppose that not only that's non-trivial. Uh, now, let me state a lemma. Let me state a lemma. Let C be in H2 de Ram of m and r minus 0. Then, I take, in the space of metrics, the bed metrics, the bed metrics, what means the bed metrics? Met c, let's say, met m and c. By definition, I take the space of metrics for which our, let's say, Catastrophe uh, happens. Now, here it's the space of Riemannian matrix on M with the property that the harmonic representative of G harmonic, the G harmonic representative of C is, uh, is SD, is GSD. So this uh, C plays the role of the chain class of this one. Yeah? So this is the problem we want to study. Is it possible that, when, uh, that the, our, our equation is compatible and when? Lemma says the following, but very important, as I cannot, I have here read, very important this one. Then, this space is a submanifold. Let's, let me write it like this, of codimension. B plus of M in the space of all metrics. You see? As soon as you fix the uh, non zero de Ram class, then, as I said, I said already, the fact that the harmonic representative uh, falls in H2 minus is probability zero. 
this is formalized by this lemma, which is not difficult to prove. You know, because if you write carefully in a convenient way this condition, yeah, so g is the variable now and c is fixed. The chain class is fixed. And you regard the condition that the g harmonic, g harmonic representative of c uh, becomes ASD, we regard it as an equation not for, for, for the form but for the metric. And if you write carefully this, this equation, we'll see that it's submersive. And we'll get a submanifold of codimension B plus. So uh, corollary, uh, if B plus of M is positive, strictly positive, then let me write it like this in a non-formalized way, appearance appearance of reductions uh, of type, let's say, L, L orthogonal with C1 dirham of L square dior different to zero. The appearance uh, can be avoided. Can be avoided by perturbing the metric. Yeah, so it's clear. Now let me make a picture. Maybe you see what happens. You have the space of metrics. And for every topological splitting of this type, but fulfilling that condition, yeah, that, that churn class is non-zero in the RAM cohomology. We have in the space of metrics of sub-manifold of, uh, of dimension B plus. Any, anyways, sub-manifold yeah, sub of, uh, of positive codimension. And it's easy to see that you have countable many at most, countable many splittings topological splittings. That means that for generic metrics you can avoid, you can avoid you, you can pick metrics which are not on, which are not in any uh, bad sub-manifold. So here we have a sub-manifolds of type met MC for different. So the point is that you have only countable many possible C's because you have countable many topological decompositions of L. So it can be avoided, this. There is also an important thing related to uh, reductions which I want to point out today. So because of the, let's say, as I said, I have more time the, than I expected. I didn't pay attention. Uh, but fortunately, so I'm, I'm, of course, happy because for the first time, I think, I, I speak about, I give talks about this, uh, this, uh, this results since something like uh, five years. And it, the first time when I have time really to point out the difficulties in a non-formal way because they are in the articles. But I can explain you so, I mean, the purpose is if, if you are interested, then it will be very easy for you to look in the articles and to see the formal proofs. Uh, so anyway, so the problem is I have time to deal with the subtle problems, with the difficult problems which are not available in standard books. Now, this is the point. And one of these, uh, let's say, technical, let's say, difficulties and subtleties, I can uh, explain in detail, is the appearance of twisted reductions. Twisted reductions. I can speak of twisted reductions. But I will explain this phenomenon um, in, a, uh, trying to, in a pedagogical way. 
as a symmetry of the moduli space. The, the moduli spaces we consider, we introduced, come with a canonical symmetry, with a canonical action of a finite group. And this is very important, especially the fixed points of this, of, of, of the transformations corresponding to, to these actions. What happens? It's a, it starts as a very easy, very easy remark. Look what happens. Uh, let me fix a morphies from H1 MZ in this copy of Z2. And let's take a non-trivial one. Let. Yeah, so we take this. In other words, rho can be regarded as an element of H1 and M Z2. It's the same. Yeah, a, a morphism between H homology 1 and Z2 is the same. We are using coefficients here, and we can improve this easily. It's the same as a, a, a cohomology class with values in Z2. It's the same. And now comes the point. Uh, one can construct, so this here you have also a subjection like this. Let's say it's not. So you can interpret this row alternatively, not only as a cohomology class with values in Z2. This is one interpretation. But another one is as a S1 valued representation of the fundamental group. So it defines a flat line bundle. Yeah? This is very important to understand multiplicatively this group, Z2. So L rho will be the associated flat. What does this mean, flat? Hermitian line bundle. Hermitian. This is also folklore. This means that it comes with a uh, tautological flat connection. This connection is not only flat. It's, let's say it's very flat. It, what I mean is it's a flat with a very small holonomy. The holonomy is contained in plus minus one. Yeah, so what happens, there are loops in M. You, 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 you go around the loop, yeah, and the parallel transport along such a loop, which is not in the kernel of rho, will be minus identity of the fiber. Yeah. So anyway, from the definition, it follows, obviously, that this is not only isomorphic, but it's canonically trivial. Is, is trivial, you see? It's convenient to make difference between trivial and trivializable. These are tri this is trivial, it comes with a canonical trivialization, this square. It's tri but this is very important because this means that E tensor L rho is isomorphic to E. Why? <laughs> you have to know the classification of Hermitian bundles on four manifolds. And the classification results it states that uh, such bundles are classified by churn classes uh, because they have the same church. They have the same churn classes. The, uh, by the way, the churn class of a row is two torsion. Is in tor two of H2MZ. Might be non-trivial. Yeah? Uh, why? Because if you take the, chain, the first chain class of this, because the rank is 2, in the formula you'll have 2 times the chain class of L rho, which is 0. So that first chain class is not perturbed. Why this is extremely important? 
because it defines an action of, of our group H1 and Z2 on the moduli space in the following way. So let, let's say F of E tensor L rho, okay, F rho if you want, in E Hermitian, Hermitian isomorphism. By isomorph in gauge theory, isomorphism of bundles always mean it covering. All our iso bundle isomorphism cover identity on the base. I don't mention that. The gauge transformations. A Hermitian isomorphism. Then we define the following involution on the, mod on, on the space of connections in the following way. So of a class of a connection, by definition, we take the class of, uh, here you can, the canonical flat connection of A rho is associated with a flat. Flat means, as I said, comes with A rho in A of L rho flat. So this is the connection I already mentioned, which has all of me in plus minus identity. Uh, so I take this and, of course, F rho of Lafon. Here you have, of course, you look at, I mean, Kobashi no Mizu. You have this uh, a chapter about operations with connections, push forward of connections. This is what you, here you, you apply. And you get back a connection. You come back, you see, with this F rho, you come back in the space of connections on the initial bundle. And this defines... This defines an action of H1 MZ2 cohomology on all the spaces. On, but we are interested in this. We are interested in the fixed points which are irreducible. And let me write down as a proposition. Let A be in M, A is B. So I take an irreducible one, an orbit, fixed under fixed under this operation, tensor rho. Uh, again, I take here with rho epimorphism. Yeah, with rho uh, epimorphism, so non-trivial here. Um, so where? Then, then A is split, but not on X, but on the double cover, then the pullback. then the, the, the pullback of A on the associated double cover, X row, uh, is reducible. In other words, in other words, A is a twisted Again, the folklore, twisted reduction. So we have distinguished points. So you see what we make? We make progress. We understand, in general, important information about the geometry of our moduli spaces. X rho tilde is the associated double cover. Yeah, the associated double cover. So, you, uh, so if you have a representation of the fundamental group, yeah, you can use it. No, it, you take the kernel. The kernel is a subgroup of index two in the fundamental group. So by the classification of the cover, of the 
theory of coverings. This defines a non-trivial, because I suppose rho is zero, a non-trivial double cover. So x, we have here x rho, x is the double cover associated to rho, or if you want to care of rho, the double cover associated with rho. So here you use the classification of the covers, of the covers of a manifold of you. Do you know? They correspond to the conjugacy classes of subgroups of the fundamental group, and so on. So here you see, very important thing. Uh, OK, so I have to stop here. Uh, I make, as I said, progress, important preparation. Usually, all these kinds, all these stories about reductions and uh, twist reductions were postponed, were done in the complex geometric part, but they don't fit well there. So it's very good that I had time and I presented all the things, which will be very useful. So tomorrow uh, will come uh, the Ullenbeck compactification in Donaldson theory. Discussions, corollaries. This is very important. Will be a, a lot. Will be a lot of discussions. Maybe also I'll have time to explain you historically what was, let's say, the the result of Donaldson, which made him famous. The first, the proof of the first theorem by, of Donaldson about the intersection form. How uh, uh, was done using Donaldson theory because we know now the elements, necessary elements. So we can take this opportunity somehow to. Uh, to, to explain this beautiful uh, result of, of, of mathematics, spectacular result of mathematics of the 80s. Uh, and then uh, the Kobashi chain correspondence, and then, I mean, directly to the um, moduli spaces used in, for the, our proofs on class 7 surfaces. Thank you very much.